Thank you for joining us. My name is Terry Smith, and on behalf of Cumulus Networks, I'd like to welcome you to Deploying True Hyperconvergence with Open Networking featuring Nutanix. Presenting today will be Damian Phillip and Mina Shankaran. Damian Phillip is a systems engineer at Nutanix. Prior to his role at Nutanix, he was a lead Cisco UCS solutions architect. He's also a CCIE and brings a wealth of experience with storage and data center technologies. Mia heads all of our ecosystem software solutions here at Cumulus Networks. She has extensive breadth and expertise in the data center space combined with business and technical acumen. The webinar will be about 30 to 45 minutes, and we'll have a short demo near the end of the presentation. We will answer a few questions at the end from the participants if time permits. For those of you interested, you have the opportunity to ask questions during the webinar by using the window marked questions. Simply type in your questions and click send. You can also tweet your questions to us, and our Twitter handle is at Cumulus Networks. And with that, I'd like to turn this over to Mina. Thanks, Mina. Okay. Welcome, Damien and uh, Nutanix for our solution webinar here. So let's dive into some details. Uh, what do you think is driving hyperconvergence in the market today? And what would you describe are your primary challenges, Damien? You know, thank you very much for the time and the opportunity. Uh, data centers have become increasingly complex over the years. Every part of the data center infrastructure life cycle is complex, from buying and deploying to configuring, managing, and scaling infrastructure. As infrastructure becomes more complex, IT organizations also have become more siloed. You need storage experts to manage complex network storage and networking experts to manage enterprise network topologies. All this significantly slows down the pace of IT deployment. Orgs have to trade off doing it right with doing it fast. As demands for resources, that is compute network storage, goes up, organizations want to be able to add capacity incrementally and predictably. Scale up or big iron infrastructure in data centers today makes it difficult to scale in the small increments when needed. So these are some of the main reasons why hyperconvergence is gaining traction in data centers today. Well described. Uh, you know, complexity is certainly been increasing, and businesses need to be much more agile with their on-demand needs and expectations from IT. So what, in Nutanix's view, is your in, a, in terms of the next-gen data center? That's a very good question, Mina. Nutanix envisions that data centers would convert legacy hardware to a virtualized environment. This is one of the main driving factors for the next generation data centers. Some other drivers are converged architecture, converging tiers for a smaller footprint, so compute and storage gets converged and providing a single pane of management for the two tiers. Also, delivering services via software. And what this means is making software intelligent and inherently distributed and fault-tolerant by design. Then there is the software-defined everything, which has become quite a staple in the data centers today. First, we had software-defined compute. That was virtualization, ESX, hypervisors. Now, software-defined networks and open networking with leaders such as yourself, Cumulus Networks in this space, and products like VMware NSX. Then, we have software-defined storage, which is our bread and butter. We are the leaders and bring a product complete with features such as tiering, compression, deduplication, all built in into the software. Another concept which is critical is of a simple software push to get features similar to what iPhones and the Tesla car does today. Finally, we have the commodity hardware to the host to host the software more cost effective than proprietary hardware and is easier to maintain. These are in essence all the elements which make up the next generation data center according to Nutanix. 
So it seems like Nutanix is, you know, is the answer to align with Cumulus Linux for a software-defined story in the data center. Now, as storage solutions and offerings have gone through several iterations with newer technologies, what problem do you specifically see Nutanix solving today? To understand the problem that Nutanix is solving, we have to understand virtualization. VMware changed the game with the introduction of hypervisors. We used to have separate physical servers host separate applications. Hypervisors and virtualization introduced the notion of consolidating these workloads. Architecturally, virtualization has a key requirement. It needs shared storage for high availability and or other features like vMotion to work. For this basic requirement, VMware had to look to the SAN storage area networks to provide shared storage, and in the process ended up creating a convoluted and cobbled up solution to present shared storage to virtualized hosts. Three-tier architecture, that is compute nodes accessing shared storage via storage fabric switches predate virtualization, and hence were designed for native OS, i.e. operating systems like HP UX, Solaris, Linux, and Windows. The storage controllers have a physical limitation from both the amount of I.O. each storage controller can handle, and also from a scale perspective. The fan-in, fan-out ratio of the compute running native OS to each storage controller has been calculated to be around 20 to 25 physical native hosts pushing active SCSI I.O. to each of the storage controllers on the SAN. Now, if you throw hypervisors and virtualization into the mix, compute nodes have more than 50 to 60 virtual machines pushing SCSI I.O. through the same three-tier architecture. This is the big problem. You can now see why bottlenecks build up and why performance starts to degrade when virtualized environments grow large. Storage vendors realized this architectural limitation and added flash devices to their storage. But as you can see, this really is only a band-aid to the overall problem and doesn't really add too much value in terms of an architectural gain. So to summarize this information, Damien, and, and help our audience here, how would you differentiate between the traditional and sort of the next-gen approach? So Nutanix as a company was created to solve this inherent architectural limitation in SANS by eliminating external stand, SAN storage completely, and along with it, also the fabric switching infrastructure that has to be managed separately. Nutanix took a page from Google's book and eliminated the SAN. Our founders came from Google and identified GFS as the wave of the future and wanted to make that concept available to other enterprise companies. NDFS, or Nutanix, distributed file system converges all compute and storage resources into a single integrated system and all the storage from all local disks into a single pool of shared storage presented up to the hypervisor as NFS storage to run all your VMs on. Since it's shared storage, you get all your enterprise grade features like HA, BRS, vMotion, and so forth. Also, you can seamlessly add additional nodes to scale out as much as you want. This allows you to buy the capacity you need today and then scale as you need to. Your total co cost of ownership is lower. This completely eliminates the requirement for any external connected shared storage and hence improves the performance and also makes management easier as now the control plane and the data plane are both highly redundant and also can scale fractionally, that is, one node at a time. Hence, over time, with your virtualization footprint growing, you can add one node at a time to increase the underlying storage and compute footprint 
non destructively this architectural key advantage allows concepts such as web scale to be inherently implemented in the nutanix solution so nutanix seems to have a lot of benefits that can pique the interest of customers what are you seeing as some of the primary drivers compared to major competitors out there so one of the primary drivers is ease of operational agility and ease of management with convergence which convergence actually brings so convergence is not new right cisco invented fcoe and which is basically their convergence story but in reality what these vendors have done is take pre-existing components and repackage with a new SKU. This model of convergence, there is a huge upfront capital expense. See how large that V block is in comparison. To get a good price performance out of it, you need to fill it up within three years. And once you fill it up, you have to add an entire new V block if you want it to scale. With Nutanix, you can start small with what you need and scale out one node and one block at a time. So as we move on to describing some of the market success of Nutanix, can you share any names for our listeners today? Yes, absolutely. In the short amount of three years of selling product, we have seen an amazing adoption from customers in all verticals. These customers are using Nutanix products for a wide range of use cases, anywhere from VDIs, server workloads, or even databases and big data. So this is great. Uh, finally, how do you perceive Cumulus Linux for the Nutanix customer base? I personally think both Cumulus and Nutanix align very closely together and bring most, almost the same values together by enabling software to be intelligently managed and provide inherent value of commodity hardware. I think both companies are positioned very well to be able to together create a software-defined data center value for our customers, which would further provide huge benefits to customers in terms of faster time to revenue, lower capex and opex, enablement of a faster and streamlined consumption model for infrastructure where hardware is consumed in compute, network, storage, pods. So Mina, if we have to turn the tables here, what would some of your key takeaways for the audience be about understanding cumulus networks in the marketplace today? Thanks, Damien. Now, we at Cumulus Networks believe that Sorry, Linux is a proven model in the industry, and leveraging best practices from history is what has caused us to build our first true full-featured Linux operating system for networking hardware. You know, this allows data centers to break free from a typical proprietary vendor lock-in model for networking gear, which is associated with constrained innovation, slower feature depth cycles, higher margins for vendors, et cetera, and realize that all of the advantages that truly uh, the vision of an SDDC or a software-defined data center could bring. You know, in the last couple of years, the momentum for open networking has really gained a lot of traction uh, with many tier one leaders such as Dell and even recently HP joining the movement. This has indeed proven how the future of networking is about abstracting the intelligence and software similar to everything we're hearing today from you on the storage and the compute world. Sounds really interesting. So as a customer or a partner, can I build an application on top of Cumulus Linux or write, say, for example, a Python script similar to an App Store concept? Yes, absolutely. Uh, that's exactly our motto, in order to simplify networking so that we're more of an enabler rather than a gatekeeper and just provide you an API approach leveraged by traditional incumbents. Cumulus Linux essentially is a network OS, and it acts as a platform that uses consistent automation tools, existing data center troubleshooting mechanisms, a variety of uh, folks that are extremely skilled with vibrant DevOps community, and also helps all network service functions such as security, load balancers, um, several technology segments such as network virtualization overlays, cloud orchestration segments, to act as applications and be built for this multi-tier end-to-end solution stack story. This has led us to create 
several validated design guides focused specifically on applications such as VMware vSphere or OpenStack and Big Data. That's a very different approach from the networking vendors that storage solutions are used to working with today. So am I tied to a single hardware? Can I choose the model I prefer? Of course. Our goal is about providing customers choice of hardware, choice of solutions, and even choice of building the next-gen architectures with the best-of-breed stack built on industry standards like the one we're discussing today. Now, for a switch to be treated as a server, we built ONI as a bare metal provisioning mechanism. Think of this as an enhanced Pixie bootloader which helps create standards for all switching hardware and has been contributed to the Open Compute Project for increasing adoption. We have over 19 plus hardware platforms uh, supported today and we maintain an active SCL hardware compatible list on our website consistently increasing support for both x86 and PowerPC CPU architectures with Broadcom switching ASX today. Wow. So now that's clear. How do you envision Nutanix as a player in your ecosystem? So speaking of the benefits of why Cumulus Linux and how are we complementary to Nutanix, you know, both hyperconvergence and open networking have been gaining popularity significantly. The power of using data center tools to automate the complete underlay fabric and provision an application cluster with the simplicity of a single orchestration engine can have a really great impact. You went through a lot of detail about the challenges faced and how Nutanix has solved the storage and compute concerns with its software-defined storage approach. We believe to have that shared vision of applying those principles as a leader in the open networking space. With the ease of operational flexibility and the variety of Nutanix nodes that can be used with Cumulus Linux, we can enable customers to deploy pods at scale and on demand with efficient resource allocation for storage, compute, and the network. Okay. This certainly sounds like it would make life as an operator much simpler. And if I'm a data center architect and considering some of these next generation designs, what would you recommend that I do? So at least as of today, if you're a customer interested in deploying Nutanix and Cumulus Linux, we can act as a top of rack access switch in a leaf spine design to build racks as needed for your deployment or have Cumulus Linux act as a L3 cloth design for your underlay network fabric in a robust and automated fashion. We are very excited to see a few customers rolling in production already with our joint solution. We've also been working on several exciting integration elements to build a tighter story together, which we'll be demoing shortly as a vision of what we have in works for our customers in the near future. Great. With time of the essence here, let's share some of the strategy ahead. Sure. So you see the elements here for the vision, and fundamentally, we would like to drive customers to a common portal of uh, managing their resources, say from Prism, which is a Nutanix UI for all their storage and compute needs today. Now by tying network to the story, the utilization, monitoring, and deployment of all resources can be managed centrally as a pod. If we are able to launch a foundation VM, which is a Nutanix VM, hosted on KVM, running in a Dell S6000 switch to build a complete cluster in an automated manner, becomes even more compelling. So let's see what we have with the demo here. Quickly listed, here are the components used. A Nutanix 1050 block that has four nodes, the Dell S6000 switch, which is Trident 2 base powered by you know, x86 CPU architectures. And we are using the Cumulus Workbench environment for folks who are familiar with the hands-on lab that you derive with Cumulus and Nux Online. So here's the topology of the uh, connectivity. And with that, I'm taking a minute here to let's start in the interest of time, we're going to show you a clip as I walk you through the steps and the different stages we're going to um, work on from a workflow. So the fundamental concept here uh, is the Nutanix Foundation VM hosted on KVM, uh, spun off a Dell S6000 switch. You see the different stages described uh, to paint the vision of a rack deployment to be consumed as a pod. Um, as you progress along, so as a pre-stage environment, you have the fabric deployment, you have the Nutanix foundation, and um, 
you start seeing the cluster being spun up, different nodes within the cluster, and you also see uh, our main goal of using some sort of an application to be provisioned. In this case, you'll see VCSA get pushed out, and you'll see the vSphere client, and ultimately the vCenter. So there is your KVM residing within the switch that you just popped up. As a start, the initial stage is about showing a complete automated install with Ansible of the network fabric. So we have two switches. As an example, they're Dell S6000 ON switches with open networking install uh, for it to run Cumulus Linux through a zero-touch provisioning mechanism. Being x86 powered, uh, there's support for KVM and host the application VMs such as Foundation. We're using Ansible and the workbench to provision. So the output from the Ansible files here are the task files, network interfaces template, uh, you're configuring two users, you're SSHing into the Cumulus workbench as a customer, and you're getting into an intro into the world of Cumulus Linux. So as you've launched and you've used Ansible Playbook, you've initialized it, you've performed the following set of actions, you've actually uh, given them pseudo access, messages a day, and now you're pinging the foundation VM to see whether it's alive. So your fabric gets deployed. And what we showed you earlier is your foundation VM kind of being run on a KVM. Now, after we provided PTMD, you've done your topology mapping, and you restarted all the services for the new configuration, you see the foundation UI. Within the foundation VM, once we have all the loose ends tied, you'll see the entire self-discovery happen. But now we're manually entering here. We enable both multi-homing and the cluster creation feature within the foundation 2.0. And as you see here, once the entries are done, you initiate the blocks, you can add more blocks, you can add more nodes per block, the cluster gets created, and as an example, um, you can start seeing three nodes get provisioned once you have the selections done for the type of ISO image and the type of mount. So this is getting manually entered here today, and once the self-discovery is also automated, you basically don't have to even do this one extra step. So with that, that completes the actual foundation install. So if you do run installation, ITMI gets configured, and your cluster install gets completed. And the provisioning starts. This provisioning process today takes about 30 to 40 minutes. Uh, so we have fast forwarded that process to show you a completion and you can capture all your log, uh, log statistics and see the syslog as the process is spun up. And this should complete to fruition in here in a second. There we go. And that's your cluster completion. All completed within the 6000 switch. Anything you want to add in there, um, Damien, as we start getting into all the statistics, you start seeing the storage pool, all the statistics getting piled up, um, you see the components of the hypervisors, you see the storage summary, and this is really where we want to start showcasing the network statistics as a single pane of glass. Exactly, you know, and I think this is a very, very seamless process, right? We talked about consumption, we talked about consuming network storage and compute as a part. This and the automation and provisioning is what actually allows you and makes it easier for you to be able to consume that. So, so at this point, sorry, at this point in time, we're actually deploying a VCSA image, which is the vCenter. And once that deployment process is completed, we actually today are manually adding the hosts into vCenter. So that one part is actually a manual process, and we'll, we've speeded up that process inside of uh, vCenter itself once we launch it. But as you can see, almost deployment for infrastructure and to the level where you can actually deploy an application on the, on the Nutanix compute and storage uh, platform has been completely automated. And I think this is very powerful because if you take a step back, we have used Ansible playbook to essentially automate the network fabric, 
uh, install the foundation VM on the switch, had the foundation VM spin up the cluster and provision the nodes, and then using that on a higher level showcase what you're able to do in terms of VMs and provisioning from vCenter. So in essence, as you can see, this kind of makes it easy for you to be able to now start looking and focusing further ahead on a software-defined data center for yourself. And Damien, would you say this is just one sample example we've done and you've just taken two leaf switches. This can be, uh, you know, this can be done on a massive scale. It can be shown as an entire rack or multiple racks and uh, to really show the detailed component interaction as well as the different phases of the PRISM integration to expose all of the network components for you, for a customer who's Nutanix uh, savvy to see storage compute and the network elements in a unified fashion. You've hit the nail on the head, Nina. I think that is exactly where we want to take this. There is a huge amount of effort that we've put in here, and this is just the tip of the iceberg. So finally, um, coming over to one of our last slides here, uh, here are some of the assets today and forward-looking to enable customers. Uh, one of the things we're going to do is the demo that you saw today, um, you know, shortened version. We are going to have it as a as part of our uh, Cumulus Workbench as a solution for customers, for SEs, for different folks to try on in your own space, in your own time and also have a variety of centralized repository complete in the next few weeks for everyone to follow up and leverage. Um, we're also looking forward to writing up a blueprint uh, so that customers can actually leverage a reference design in terms of how do I deploy it today, what's coming in the next 90 days, how do I deploy it six months from now, and really see the benefits of kind of combining this joint solution and being able to acquire this, say, from Nutanix or some of our joint channel partners as a single mechanism through a best of breed acquisition. So with that, um, Carrie, um, I will hand it over to you for any additional Q&A. And it um, looks like we, we have some questions coming up um, over the chat or, or I don't know if we have maybe a time for one question. Um, <clears throat> So actually, we need to finish up. Okay. We're out of time now, but thanks, Mina. Thank you, Damian. Um, we are out of time. Thank you, everyone, for your participation. We hope you found this presentation about hyperconvergence in a software-defined data center useful. We'd love if you offered your feedback via the follow-up email. Please tune in to our next webinar on March 11th, where we take a technical deep dive into Network Interface Manager IF Updown 2 with Rupa Prabhu. Or you can join us each week for Coffee with Cumulus um, every Thursday morning for a product overview and introduction to Cumulus Linux. Details are available on our website at cumulusnetworks.com webinar. Thank you everyone for your time today. <laughs>